house. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu jami'an. I like to talk a real quick video. Uh, my little busy schedule today with my um, kids. Um, somebody, uh, some brothers were having a great discussion about um, the inner city or or basically the black community, Muslim community, of um, some of the limits pertaining to the black woman and her attitude and um, her beliefs. And um, a brother had a good discussion on YouTube how that many of the African-American Muslim brothers uh, who had uh, picked the option not to marry black African-American Muslim women due to their uh, behaviors, um, due to their attitudes, due to them, um, pushing out the black male from the household due to her behavior. La, no, put that down, I'm watching you. So um, there is a dilemma if we really wanna get deep into details on this topic um marrying outside of black women or non-black women or um black american or north american women in general due to their bad behaviors now i think i'm a person i could talk about this topic because i've been married a few times to black sisters they don't last the marriages don't even last more than two years in some cases and some brothers are tired and tired of these women of this behavior so they are picking the options to marry uh, women from different ethnic groups besides um, black. Either they're marrying um, from like North Africa, Africa, and Southeast Asia in the African American Muslim community. And some of them are marrying from Africa itself. And I have took that route. I have took that route. And I know many brothers have took that route. But the grass is never greener on the other side. And many of us brothers, we think that the grass is greener on the other side. And in a lot of realities, it's not. But a lot of brothers get less headaches. All right. Women going to be headaches with no matter what is their nationality. All right. But it appears that some of the sisters who are uh, not black Americans, they are less of a headache. Even though women are a headache, no matter what is their nationality. Trust me. Um... <clears throat> but there is a dilemma um, with this type of behavior uh, in the black community, especially the African American Muslim community. Um, you know, I seen a brother who gave a good talk, and he was mentioning he showed a clip from Omar Johnson, who was saying that um, that the black man uh, has need to stop marrying the snow buddy or white woman, basically, <clears throat> and. Um, I think Omar Johnson was discussing about a group of black men who was talking about, well, if black women want the black man to marry a black woman, she needs to change her behavior. And I 100% agree with this, all right? And uh, I believe Omar Johnson is not in agreement, and it sounds like um, he is uh, really trying to hit the emotions of um, black women for most likely a majority of his followers. And that's from the black conscious community, right? Um, this majority, mo mostly women, or filled in the black conscious community. Well, I want to really talk about that. I'm not 100% with Omar Johnson. I don't, I don't agree with him with many things um, pertaining to the, the mixed race issues. But Omar Johnson has a point. And a lot of us African-American brothers, or Muslim or not Muslim, um, a lot of us would never look at the bigger plan. And this is not just an issue of black men. This is the issue of black people all across board. Black people, we now organized. Black Americans, we are now organized all across the board. We now organize when it comes to economics. We now organize when it comes to the political field. We now organize when it comes to family issues. And one of the things that shows that we lack in all these uh, 
sections, financial, economics, um, and family is pertaining to who you marry. Now, for African American Muslim, if all of us, if all of us marry women outside our race from different ethnic groups, Islam doesn't prohibit this. All right, but if all of you marry women from outside your race, don't marry black American sisters. I have no issues related to marrying um, white, black, North African, Africa, uh, Asian. As Muslims, you know, the Ummah, the Ummah, the Muslim nation is very vast, uh, right? But if you keep on marrying outside your uh, community, you don't marry black women in your own community, then who's going to marry them? This is a reality that no one is talking about. If everybody in the black, <clears throat> black community is marrying, African American and Muslim communities marrying outside their race and other nationalities, which I have no issue with. Myself, I'm not married to a black sister. Hey, get out of there. I, I, no. Don't even go in there. If we marry outside our race, including myself, I'm not married to a black American. I have it many times and don't work out. And I agree on that point. They don't work. The modern women don't work. All right? If you marry, and I'm going to talk about that in the, the video. If you marry outside of your race, who's going to marry your, these women? See, we're not thinking about the bigger picture. All right? And just like how we are not organized when it comes to economics, we're not organized when it comes to politics. We're not organized either when it comes to family structure and family issues pertaining to the black American um, community, whether it's African American, Muslim, or African American. We're not, we have, you know, con <clears throat> we're not conscious. And we're not long term planning. We're not long term building. For example, when Bill Gates, right, whenever he passed away, right, or those big corporations owned by white people, who do you think is going to inherit these corporations and these business? Their, their white children is going to inherit them. So related to business and money, and money is related to marriage. And if you've been a Muslim, African-American Muslim, and you travel to the Muslim world, you notice that people marry in the Muslim world, their cousins, their first cousins. People will have money, money in the Muslim world, especially in the Gulf states, the Arab states, the Gulf states, people who are wealthy and rich. You notice they marry their cousins. They marry their children off to their cousins. They marry their children off to their brothers and sisters' children, especially those who have money from amongst them. And that keeps the money in the family. That keeps the money in the family, right? So even when it comes to economics, African Americans, Muslims, we're not even there. Politically, we're not there. We don't think about the future. And just as family issues, we don't we are not there. Now for the black woman in America, with who I'm not happy with, I am not happy with. I haven't met that many that I really would even want to consider to be marriage or marriage material. And that's not just black American uh, women. That's um, Western women, white Western women, white uh, uh, Western women, Muslim or Muslimat. That's black Western women. That's black uh, Western Muslim women. Uh, to me, they're just weak. They're just weak, in my personal opinion, when it comes to family structure, home structure. And selfish, selfish, they're weak, right? But I have to say, as the long term game plan, if you don't marry these women, who's going to marry them? Who's going to marry? Them? Who's going to deal with them? Who's going to fix their issues? Who's going to fix their issues? You know? Who's going to fix their issues? Who who understands them the best? 
Do the white man understand them the best? Do the Arab man understand them the best? Who understands them from their cultural experience? Who understand them from historical points? Especially with related to the US. Who understands them the best? <clears throat> Despite their behaviors. So then we have to start asking ourselves long term what's going to be an effect when you, we don't marry them who's going to marry them we don't see in the u.s already especially in the black community in the u.s the high uh, numbers of uh, lesbians and homosexuals we don't see that going on who's going to get with who's going to uh, if you don't marry them Who's going to get with these women? If you're running from your own women, who's going to get them? And just like uh, uh, some brothers would say, well, in these other cultures, the men are not complaining about the women like that. All right. And, I, and I've been to other countries. There's some countries where the woman is a mess. I've been to Egypt. Egyptian women, I'm not going to say all of them. They're a mess. They're a mess. I've been in some countries, the, the women in that country, they have mess, the mind, behavior, hard to deal with. That's not restricted to black American women. Matter of fact, in all the hadith of the Messenger Law, so the law alayhi wasallam, when he's speaking about why the woman will go to the hellfire, right? And some of the narrations, like the narration pertaining to um, uh, giving a sadaqah, and the Prophet Sallallahu said to a group of women to give in charity because he's seen from them to be the majority in the hellfire. And one of the women who were actually black in the hadith, her face was open, who was black, and the hadith said she was black, asked the Prophet why. <laughs> and he said, due to your tongues. He told it to the women. All right? In this narration, a Prophet's talking about women in general, but who he's first addressing? He's dressing a majority Arab woman. <laughs> who is he dressing? He's talking in general about women, but who who is he physically addressing first? <laughs> Arab women. <laughs> He's talking to Arab women. <laughs> Got me there? If he's talking to Arab women, so you and he's speaking in general to all women, but face to face, he's talking to Arab women face to face. Even though the advice is am is general for it. the whole situation. I mean, all women talking about the, some of their bad descriptions or behaviors that they have, right? But he's addressing first who our women. So we might think it's bad. We think we might think it's greener on the other side. And I'm telling you, brothers, it's not greener on the other side. How many brothers I know who marry outside African American brothers who married from like places like Morocco, places like Egypt, and got scammed. We need to talk about the real truth. I know many brothers who marry from Morocco, Egypt, Africa, other places in Africa, got scammed, got scammed, got played. Got huh? Many brothers. I know a whole bunch of them got scammed. Got played. Women got the green card out the door, disappear. I know brothers. Got woman from Morocco. As soon as that sister got her green card, brother come home one day, the woman's gone. Woman's gone. I know a brother personally married some, or they, him and his family, the men in his family married sisters from Morocco. And as soon as those own women got their money, they was gone, gone, gone. Only ones who didn't go, or the one who was stuck with kids, the Moroccan woman who had kids with them. Many stories like that. So we need to really sit down and be real, man. And sit down and think long term. If you don't marry your women, who's going to marry them? We need to think about long term. Even though I don't agree with Omar Johnson and I don't follow him in a lot of his things, but when he talks, talks about the black women, if we're not invested into them, then who's going to be invested to their own women? Despite their behavior, do you think there's peaches and cream on the other side? You think that in these other countries in the Muslim world, 
there's no divorce even though you might find some of the women more submissive or they have more submissive women but a lot of you brothers don't want these submissive women some brothers so even when you go overseas you'll be looking for women who look very similar to black women appearance let's be real and sometimes you even marry the women from the outside for the wrong reasons. We need to be real and honest to ourselves. And if you don't invest into your women, then who's going to be investing into them? I don't hear Arabs talking about this. I don't hear Asian Muslims talking about this. I know brothers who are... Uh, who are different nationalities they married to women in their culture right and you brothers think they peaches and cream oh no full hijab full niqab full hijab committing zina full hijab niqab don't make salat very quiet outside but in the house she's a home wrecker my brother I met from Southeast Asia, wife Muntaki, but show me one day in the house, show me some pictures. So the Billahi, he's like, yo, he caught her in the in the in the middle of the night, talking to some men online, dressed like this. He captured the picture and everything. She didn't she didn't notice him. So it ain't greener on the other side. I don't know what you guys, the brothers, y'all talking about. It it's not greener on the other side. Because the women might dress away and look very submissive. And the brother showed me this. I said, I never suspect your wife to be like this. It's like, yes, brother, look. And she has me in family court. I mean, I'm like, your wife is the quietest woman I ever see. So, oh, in the house, she's something else. And this is not blacks. It's not black Americans. It's not even African. Asians. Southeast Asian Muslims. So don't think it's greener on the other side. So if you don't invest in your women... Who's going, who's going to invest in them? And the Muslims from these other countries, they women have issues. You're still investing to them. You're going to knock my um my thing off. Put it on their right. What's that in back of it? No, what's, pre what's preventing you to lay it on the table? We have half of the um my, my Chromebook sticking out. It's going to fall. Move that thing, black thing back. There you go. Thank you. So if you don't invest, who's going to invest in them? Long-term planning, not short-term. You know, when you when a person uh, builds, right? If you look at people, right, who build things. Matter of fact, some of us might live in communities where they're building the mansion in phases, right? And fixing black people issues. <laughs> it's just like that building that these big mosques. Sometimes these big huge mosques when they buy land they show you pictures first phase second phase third phase fourth phase right what are you thinking when you when you building and fixing community and you building and fixing the black family is things gonna be done in phase the first phase second phase who said it's gonna be easy there's gonna be some struggle and if you even look with the hikma the hikma and the wisdom when the Prophet Sallallahu was addressing these issues with the women who had these bad behaviors and traits, did he just ignore it? Did he ignore it? Did he tell his companions, Radwanullah, to don't marry these women? Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, told to the women, that he seen the majority of the women in the fire due to their tongues and due to their ungratefulness. And he was even addressing women when he was talking. Did he tell his companions to don't deal with these women? Rather yet, he what? He corrected the women behaviors. Taught them what's the best way to behave and what's the worst way to behave. A woman came to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a Hassan Hadith and she was asked for a khulla from her husband. Right? It's due to her shortcomings. Prophet granted her 
the divorce, she remarried another husband. And she went and she was knocking at the Prophet's door or she was at his door. And this narration is Abu Bakr was there and she wanted to talk to the Prophet. And she said something in the reference to the new husband penis was small. Penis was small. Something in reference to his penis was small. And the Prophet told her to go back and consummate her marriage. So the Prophet ﷺ, he dealt with these issues. He dealt with these issues. And he told her to go and consummate her marriage with her new husband. And say she couldn't uh, go back to the other husband. So he dealt with the women and their behaviors. If we keep on making excuses not to really fix things in our community and fix the women in our community and we keep on making fun of them, I don't see nobody else doing this. Even though the black woman, she got a lot of issues, a lot of issues. Muslim ads from our peoples got a lot of issues. But our brothers, we got a lot of issues too. And just like how we now organize when it comes to economics, we now organize, we have no game plan. That's when it comes to politics, we now organize, we have no game plans. Same thing with family. We now organize and we have no game plan. So if everybody going to marry outside the black woman, don't want to marry her, then who's going to marry her? You know, one day some brother was talking like this, including myself, because the black woman... Even though I'm saying this, me, I don't want them. The bad manners, bad attitude. One day we was talking like this in front of Bengali, brother, one of our companions. You know, he said to me, he said, man, if you guys don't marry your women, who's going to marry them? And he said, you think you got got easy? He, you know, he explained about his own issue with his own wife. Kicking him out the house all the time. <laughs> you guys think it is greener on the other side. Oh, it's not greener on the other side. It's not greener on the other side. I remember once talking to one of my Pakistanis friend, older brother. He had a bag with him. Pakistani, older brother. Had a bag with him, a bag. And he said to me, I'm gonna give you some advice. I said, What Akhi? He said, Don't don't live with women in their houses. Get your own house and have the woman live with you. I said, Why you say that? He said, Man, this woman is married to a Pakistani. He said, This woman, she threw all his clothes out the window. And he, he had, he's in the mash with all his clothes in the back. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, you think it's greener on the other side? It ain't greener on the other side? What are you talking about? It's not greener on the other side. <laughs> women is women. <clears throat> the only difference is that we live in a society in America which don't give man control over his women and his children. See, that's the main issue. So when we talk about the black woman, and marry outside the race, you really need to talk about men need to get control over their families through the legal system. Men lost control over their family and children by the legal system in the U.S. In the West. And you talk about those Muslim countries where the woman, the man, the woman has certain good behaviors and the man has a say-so, that's because the government still put the power in the man. In the U.S., the man don't have yes. that. Don't have that. Be mindful. Yes. Don't have that. Ah, get out. What are you doing, boy? <laughs>